I don't know how my brothers in the office are on Sunday morning with their families. Maybe y'all are a bunch of saints and good people, but I know I am not. On Sunday morning, I get up, and I believe my four boys, or at least three of them that are able to get up on their own, will be up and ready to go to receive the gifts of our Lord Christ. To find out they are not, I have to get them out of bed, sometimes by turning the bed over, and then have to find their shoes. And for some reason in our house, we have 10 pairs of Spider-Man shoes, all in different sizes. So by then about 10 minutes, they all have two left feet, and they're in different sizes. I'd like to say I'm patient at this time, petitioning my sons to understand that we are going to the house of the Lord to receive his gifts, to be forgiven our sins, to be justified by our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. So come, my beloved children, but we all know that doesn't happen. My rage picks up, and I'm shocked that Child Protective Services next doesn't call on me the following day. I don't take my vocation as father by my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and deal patiently with my sons, but instead think that harshness, cruelty, and sometimes sheer volume will get them to act up and walk in the way I want them to. Because I could do that this morning, right? I could scare you into being a good pastor or being a good layman. That's what our text sounds like, right? You're either going to get a harsh beating or a light beating. Either way, you're going to get beat. What a great gospel lesson. Thank you, Brother McMen. <laughs> our Lord Christ says, you also must be ready. For the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. So are you ready for Jesus to return? If he came back right now, could you say to him, my brothers in the office, I've been a faithful caretaker of souls. You pastors, could you say, I've been a faithful sheepdog, Jesus, steadfast in listening to my shepherd and persistent in defending the sheep Christ gives me. You pastors, could you say, yes, Lord, I've done all that is within me. I have rightly distinguished law and gospel, handling it in the proper time for the proper conscience. Yes, Jesus, I faithfully visited my shut-ins, cared for my widows, and have been a perfect example of Christian piety. You pastors, could you really stand before Jesus and say, I'm ready. I've been faithful. Repent, my brother pastors, for we have not been faithful to the vows we made to God and to the church. We've either been lofty or lazy, and in that we have failed in our vocations as faithful sheepdogs. Well, wouldn't it be nice, lady, if today I just beat pastors up so you could get out free? No. You sheep who hear the voice of your shepherd, don't think for one minute that these words of Jesus are just for those in the office of the holy ministry. Have you sought every opportunity to receive the sacrament of the altar? Think about it. Do you have two services at your church? Why just go to one? Why not go back at the late service? Why not? Do you eat lunch in the same day you eat breakfast? <clears throat> Are you adamant in getting your pastor to personally absolve you every week? Do you meditate on God's word day and night, living in that baptismal grace? Do you, with 100% focus, gladly hear and learn every word that proceeds from the mouth of your pastor during the sermon, whether you like him or not? Are you keeping busy in loving your neighbor as you wait for Jesus to return? Or are you beating your neighbor with gossip, lies, and covetous thoughts? Repent, my brothers and sisters in Christ, for you have not upheld the third commandment in love, but have wrecked it in thinking you know it too well, 
or you just have outright neglect of it. My friends, it's great. It's a true blessing that you have contrition over your failures and weaknesses. It's fantastic that you know by your own merit you are a royal mess. You aren't ready for Christ to come back. It's great, a blessing when you know that. Have that humility to know that you can't merit a thing before Christ. That you must rely solely on His grace. But it's even greater... It is a greater blessing that faith given to you by Christ trusts in his absolution. Truly, beloved, in Christ's absolution, you are well prepared and ready for him to come back at any moment. Brother pastors, take heart. You who, like me, have failed our descendants of sinful, negligent, and doubt-ridden men. You and I descend from denying Peter, doubting Thomas, persecuting Saul, and gluttonous Luther. Jesus doesn't choose perfect men for the office, but rather is resolved to place sinful men like you and me to feed starving sinners. Blessed preachers, take heart this day that Christ assumes all your failures. He shows up in your weakness this day and doesn't punish you, but cleanses your lips and your hands that you may continue to do the work he gives you to do. Starving sheep, it's good that you're here. It's good Every time the Holy Spirit calls you to receive the gifts of the cross. For you are not justified by your obedience to the law, but by Christ's obedience to the law. For Jesus kept the third commandment perfectly and gladly heard and received his Father's word. As Luther's hymn puts it, God said to his beloved Son, it's time to have compassion. Then go, bright jewel of my crown, and bring to all salvation. From sin and sorrow set them free. Slay bitter death for them, that they may live with you forever. Little flock, your Lord Jesus the Christ had and continues to have compassion on you. Your Lord Jesus purchased atonement for you on the cross and there paid for your salvation in full And now every time you fail, every time you are negligent, every time you stab your brother in the back and come to him in repentance, that gift of the atonement is distributed to you, the gift of the cross. Assembly of believers, Christ takes all your unpreparedness and laziness and makes it his own this day. Blessed are you for now in this blessed exchange. You are his righteousness, his holiness, and you are well prepared. Christ will find you ready and willing to go home with him. Not because you've been scared into obedience, but because you are cleansed in the blood of Jesus the Christ. He covers all of your sin. Be of good cheer. You are forgiven. You are ready for Jesus to return. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen.